Okay. I just wasn't sure if we were continuing the stream forward, but we're not because we're deep. So, okay. I saw that the ship was stopped. Yeah. It was moving. Stopped. Yeah. Okay. Got it. All caught up. Yep. I know how to do my job. Very good at it, and I'm always on time. <laughs> Hey, you get a pass. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, you don't get a pass on the thousands of push-ups, but it's yeah, your birthday. No, so I do have to do this. You How many days do, do we have left? If I do 100 a day, it's still, it's still not enough. I have to do 200 a day. <laughs> <laughs> Renny's jacked at the end of the job. <laughs> it's like right. huge. Yeah. Schwarzenegger. <laughs> do you have challenges, like push-up challenges, when you're on land, too? Or is um, just a he's never basement. late when he's on land. I'm never late, yeah. <laughs> I don't have anything to be late for when I'm on land. <laughs> no one. Right. <laughs> don't no one continue. To, no no not, one that's not a happy sentence. That I'm bold into. <laughs> for, good, for better or worse. <laughs> so, here's a little... I don't know how funny you'll find this. I think you'll find it funny based mm. on our bit of... Me it being a bit blonde this, this time Whoa. around. Hey. Oh. That one does not like that. Thank you. Green. It's green. Green. Yep. Anyways. It's another color. We were talking about all these acronyms, and I was like, yeah, it's. Oh. I'm just going to start making up acronyms that are not. No, I'm not telling this right. I'm going to quit. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. In my mind, you made up an acronym that was actually an acronym. Like nope. you made, nope. you got it, it was right. Better. It, it was, was better, better than that. Wait, okay. Are we yeah. Back to Arvel. Arvel. <laughs> Don't do this. <laughs> we're saying that AJ could fly you and I could be in science, uh -huh. but I would. He would mess up all the controls, and right. I would mess up all the acronyms because I don't know them. Right. And then I was trying to come up with non like fake acronyms, and then my my second try, my first try had two of the same letters, so not very good. <laughs> my second one was C D me. <laughs> C D me. So not so not even, so a not even a letter. Not even a letter. <laughs> Trevor looks at me, he's like, you got to two, and you can't even come up with the letter. <laughs> the third letter didn't come out. I also like that the consequences of this swap are that. AJ ruins everything, and you're like, so all science does is come up with acronyms. <laughs> I guess I wouldn't be so good at that. <laughs> AJ ruins everything, and I just gotta you. say the right acronym. <laughs> That's all they're doing back there anyway, <laughs> telling me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Work, work with them for a long time, it does seem like <laughs> So on a scale of 1 to 10, just how... How easy is it to work with the Ocean Network's candidate crew? We're your favorite, right? Like, 10 is the best? Well, until you... I, I mean, mean, this is... Yeah. For, <laughs> I mean, what? That's great. For a lot of us, we've done a lot of work with ONC, both here on Nautilus and elsewhere. Yes. Right. Um, I'm, I can't imagine how many times uh, Josh Tedarenko there has been out. This is my 17th. OE, ONC leg. 17? So you're quite I think used this to is my so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so very familiar with the methods, and I think that's why this works so well, is we know the, the little trip tricks to get get all the objectives accomplished. Yeah. And, and you, you know the people really well, too. So the, the banter yeah. is really just love. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all it is. Got it. Uh, well, I, it's kind of nice because we get to do increased banter for ONC because yes. at least on Nautilus, uh, sometimes we have a lot of people in like green positions, so you got to focus a lot more. But we know that everybody here knows what we're doing. So so during Blue Water Watch, we can be a little bit more bantery. <coughs> yeah. Um, but, the, I mean, in general, even just stepping into ONC if you're brand new versus some certain other uh, clients or, you know, science. Not, not so much science, but um, ONC is one of the better, it's, in, in my opinion. They're they're fantastic, um, and part of that is because they have worked with ROVs so much. They understand so much. Uh, you guys, so many ROVs, so many ROVs, and so many. And, uh, it helps a lot when the client understands so much about how we we need to operate and the difficulties and nuances, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Their engineering skill, especially the, our, mostly I know the crew out at the Marine Technology Center in Sydney are fantastic. Yeah. 
You got a lot of good people. Yeah. It's kind of a little to the point, though, where, like, when they all of them do their introductions, I'm like, as a matter of fact, on my very first leg, Ed, Ed was out there, too. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Ubiquitous Ed? Yeah, yeah it's just, uh, I, I remember when a lot of these people were co-ops still yeah. in uni, and uh, then they were able to turn that into a, you know, junior level position, and then work their way up. Now they're all in senior level or managing. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice to see. I remember when Dirk was 12. <laughs> it's just waiting for the moment when everyone realizes that he's a thousand years old, right? <laughs> and has been doing this for like no, when, when I, wait, when you was there, when you started? Yeah, <laughs> he said he'd been doing it for ten years since then, and like <laughs> just keep go going back, keep going back. Yeah, this is the only thing I found interesting on the whole planet. It's Kaiser Soze. You you look you look in the you look uh, like the mess, and there's a picture of Ed from like, yeah. 19, yeah, yeah. from 1784 yeah. or something, christening the boat. Yeah, the Alexander von Humboldt. Yeah, Ed. <laughs> Ed's there, <laughs> smashing a the champagne in, bottle. Yeah, in the background, <laughs> drinking out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but he looks Good. he looks older there somehow. <laughs> somehow. Yeah. Uneventful. How is he holding the phone? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, Renny, I gotta admit. Uh, oh. my day has not been great. I'm pretty upset. Oh, okay. Do we want to talk about it right now over the air? Yes. Because <laughs> it seems like that's what I, you want to do. I, th I thought that's what air it out means. Okay, air it out. Yeah. Well, it has to do with you. Oh, no. So, I was sitting at breakfast mm. with people that know you fairly well okay. from here. And, of course, it's your birthday, so we're on the subject of you... They were, did, did you hear stuff about me that I you didn't? I learned things oh, no. that I cannot forget. I'm sorry. Like your birthday today? I'll forget that. No, no problem. Great. But I like, can forget the 13th. No, I can forget that. It's not an All issue. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Forget your name. For, you but probably but, you know where I live now. No, no, more oh. intimate stuff. More that intimate. I, I didn't even want to ever. Oh no. It's terrible. <laughs> okay. I think I broke our blood pact of. It's okay. I'll try to surreptitiously find things out about you. No, no, you. no. I think I think we need uh, to do like I know a what you're talking about. memory erase, okay. bonk on the head. Or, yeah, that's yeah. you were part of the problem, Ed. So don't. <laughs> yeah. No, you're just mad because I'm in the circle and you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you're just mad because I've been around for all the historical events of the past thousand years. <laughs> thousand years. <laughs> And still, I tell you, this running water thing is <laughs> <Yeah>. awesome. <laughs> oh, man, the wheel. Yeah, that changed it, everything. <laughs> My back. Ed McNichol is Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was Wolverine around forever? I think he's around for a while, but not 1800s. forever. 1800s. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. Like late 1800s. Yeah. He's coming back in the new Deadpool, isn't he? Absolutely. Yeah. That's the thing I never bought about the vampire movies. Like, you're a vampire yeah. and you're going to hang out with high school kids? He's not a vampire. Uh, no, like the oh, whole... The, 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 yeah, okay. Yeah. That's why you got to watch um, Harry what, Potter. We do, what We Do the Shadows. So you can watch more realistic take on vampires. Oh, really? Yeah, you should watch it. It's because that's what we need. hysterical. Yeah. Oh, cool. It's so funny. Have you ever seen Wolf Cop? Nah. Is that like a Sharknado? Yeah. Yeah. Wolf, like it's a, a, wolf? a werewolf. <laughs> a werewolf that's a... Don't tell me. <laughs> suspense. Suspense. Yeah, I'll let you guys go. <laughs> see, yeah. it. see it for yourself. Yeah, don't. Spoilers. Yeah. Don't <laughs> spoil it. Shrimp. Uh, don't, don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Renny. Thank you. Thanks, How old AJ. are you? 36. Holy moly, that's old. Whoa, yeah, AJ. Falling apart. <laughs> that's, just, that's not even... You gotta be subtly funny about that. You can just <laughs> say oh, it like sorry, that. Sorry, sorry. Oh no, now Josh knows how old I am too. <laughs> oh no, Josh. I'm sorry. You're learning all these things about me, bud. <laughs> I know I it wasn't supposed to be that way. <laughs> I think a tear's gonna come out. Yeah. I'm not angry anymore. I'm just upset. That was a nice soft bud, though. Yeah. I, yeah. Thanks I've, for that. Yeah, I lobbed a bud at you. <laughs> <laughs> Lobbed. Just a little yeah, lobbed in there. 
Here you go, bud. <laughs> oh. uh. Yep. AJ. Yes. So we're um, on our next dive. We're doing a hydrophone or some sort of swap of something first. Yeah. Right? Hydrophone. The quad hydrophone array. Yeah. Hydrophone array. That's that big pyramidal. Mm -hmm. The thing that was in the hole. Black and white. No, it's no, uh, no, no, no. that's the cork. It's right next to the sink, like the outdoor sink on the deck. So the there's deck. a cork and a sink. Okay. So let me let's start off on the right foot here. <laughs> there's a hydrophone up here on the surface. It's on the boat. <laughs> Top. Up. Up. Up here. And I think there's also one down at the bottom. I right. heard it in the hold. Down. Is that in what the he said? I heard it. Is that the one that's in the hold? He said in the hole. Oh. I think he was talking about the cork. The yeah, cork I was. Yeah. But then he said sink. Yeah, yeah the I sink, that's the sink for the, the top deck. one. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We're talking about the up top. The, the, new, the new one. <laughs> yet to be deployed. <laughs> what good is a sink down there? <laughs> it's, all, it's all a sink. <laughs> the big sink, this as they call it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, to quote Cormany, I've lost the plot here. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that anyone's writing this show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is writer strike, and it's affecting. Is it, yeah. Is it my job to try to get us back on track? No, yes. oh, no I'm trying man. to understand. This is on track. We're yeah, we are yeah. talking about hydrophones. We're yeah, we're on the track. What's the ETA from work recovery? What's our time to surface here, folks? 42 minutes, 28 seconds. Mm -hmm. 40, so I'll say one hour to start. Yeah, I've got to get back to the, back to the business. Man, putting a beacon low on the mooring, that's a smart idea. Uh, right? Yeah, because then you can keep tracking it. Yeah. Sometimes. Even as it floats away. What's the, how far away do you think it could float before we'd lose it? Uh, we actually did some tests with a beacon that was dangling 50 meters, and we had a small boat drive it away from the ship to try to test our slant, our slant range, because this is like optimized for deep water. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I'd have to look at my notes to remember. <laughs> that whole, we track that it. whole thing. We bunch of stuff and nothing. Yeah, and then nothing at the end. We I couldn't remember. I was trying that whole time I was talking it was just like filling time. I was vamping for the rest of my brain to figure out what the thing was. It took me about ten seconds in to figure out what that was happening. Yeah, just kept going. I'm gonna have to look at my notes. Um for the record, if I was you in that position, I totally would have made just made oh, yeah. something up. No, we got away pretty far with it, but we know but, that about but the you, problem Josh. is you don't actually know the accuracy. Um because we ha I mean, the, the best we could do is we had a GPS on the little small boat, but it was dangling from a wire, so you don't really know the currents, you know. So you could track where your where the USPL is telling you it is and where the small boat is, but it kind of corrodes over time, the distance inaccuracy. Because now you're dealing with the slant, like your sound speed through water at a certain plane. I got you. Yeah. I know you don't think I do, but I do. Yeah. That's right. Thanks, man. So right now See the these? beacon is... How far is the oh. beacon? <laughs> <laughs> you shocked you. <laughs> uh, I will tell you that. Yeah. From the aft of the ship, the beacon is currently 350 meters. Woo. That's like a pretty shallow angle because only 140 <coughs> meters down. Right. So we can do this math. Yeah, there's triangles really? we can make. I got lots of triangles. Ar Arctan. Yeah, do some Arctan. What's he doing back here? Hey, hey get out of here. Yeah, get out. You what did you say? 350? 350 yeah. uh, horizontal over oh, 140. Okay. I wouldn't let them, Trevor. Uh, but here's another thing is the depth gets really degrees. inaccurate at those angles. Yeah. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we looked at Sonardyne right now and it had a crazy... No, uh, no okay. it's not so bad. It's 140. Yeah, uh, yeah in the mooring is like 150, but then there's like half of the, the beacon's not 
where the anchor was, and yeah. the buoy's half out of the water, so I think 140 is pretty accurate. Yeah, not bad. Good job, so are they? So that's 68.2 degrees from, mm -hmm. no? Yeah, I just, there's, I just use, there's a right 45. triangle calculator that I just use. I'm uh, sergeant. I, I don't do the. 90 minus 68.2. Yeah. It's like 22 degrees is your slant. From, so that's from horizontal. Right now. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty impressive. <coughs> yeah, I mean, the, the system is already uh, like six meters below the ship, and it's optimized for a 7,000 meter is like the, the max. So it's, it's a deep water system. It's not really yeah. meant to track stuff at doing high angles, speed. but it's yeah. doing all right. It's doing pretty It'll good. Speed up a bit. It'll at least get you in the ballpark. Better than the ballpark. I'll get you in the infield. Anybody know what day the like actual week it is besides Tuesday? Thursday. It's Thursday. Actual it's Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. yeah. We're into the no mores, that's what Dan likes to say. Mm -hmm. I like that. I'm going to use that. The no mores. That's pretty good. Yeah. Like no more Thursdays left for yes. the cruise? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You're in the final week. That is good. And also sad. Whoa, you mm -hmm. heard it, folks. Josh will be sad to see us go. <laughs> no, I just don't want to go home because <laughs> my apartment's he doesn't infested with rats. Oh, okay. Did you make that part up? Just at the end? <laughs> you didn't have anywhere to go with it? Because <laughs> you were about to say something even more sad, and then you decided to back off. Something Josh real? Something, yeah. real, something, something real. real that was, like, super depressing. <laughs> yeah, so then you went with rats? <laughs> And I'm not buying that because I, I tried to get up there to see that him once better? and I couldn't get past security. <laughs> it was funnier. I don't think the rats could either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, man. See, I told you I just make something up. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> it's a Somebody with uh, b uh, rats. <laughs> so, uh, yep, uh, rats. Rats, rats. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor's got a great story about visiting a friend's friend somewhere, talking about what the what the, each of them does, and he's like, "Well, I work on boats," and they're like, "Oh, no kidding! The guy who lives above us does." He's like, "Well, no, I work on like scientific research vessels." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, that's what he does." And Trevor's like, "Well, I'm actually a, a pilot of a remotely operated vehicle." And they're like, "I think that's what he does," too. and they just kept going and going and going, and it turns out that. He was in an apartment right under Josh's apartment. <laughs> yeah, then I get a text from Trevor. Are hey you man, upstairs? Are you upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, come on up. That's kind of creepy. <laughs> and, I, and I knew the, and I actually was friends with you, the person. Oh, uh, that's so funny. Yeah, I yeah. know that. There's like yeah. a handful of people that could right. answer those questions like in that order. Trevor's like, like no, it's no, no. <laughs> it's such a small. You don't understand. <laughs> Thing. Oh. Clearly, like, you're yeah. not getting it. <laughs> Clearly you're not getting it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, not like that at all. Well no wait. Yeah, exactly like that. <laughs> What's their name? <laughs> now Josh, this Trevor, is he in the room with you right now? Yeah. Uh no. <laughs> No, he is not. Yeah. I, I was told. He just Have told you ever me he's seen not him here. talk to someone else? No. Uh, right. <laughs> That's quite a happenstance, though. It, it was hilarious. Yeah. Seeing that Trevor lives on Vancouver Island. Right. Oh, no. Now we're process yeah. of elimination. The whole plot is all about I you. I think you don't <laughs> live on Vancouver Island. Yeah, right. but that could be... It's the rest of the world that's yes. open. It's, it's narrowed. <laughs> it's One little <laughs> island is gone and you're upset? Right. Yeah. You know how much I learned about you this morning? <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Such a terrible <laughs> response. I learned a lot about you, Rennie. Uh, <laughs> uh. Yeah, especially for yeah, somebody happy who's birthday. None of it good. The side. <laughs> None of it good. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> 
Speechless. The van is speechless. Anyway, any no, I was trying to questions come in. I was trying to. No, get there are no questions <laughs> coming in because uh, you actually follow what we're talking about. Thanks for about. chiming in because somebody was asking where do the ROV pilots put their feet with all that stuff on the desk. I wasn't going to ask that one. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, but I I could put cam van uh, one out and they could see the answer to that question. What happened Whoa. to Dave's arms? Dave's cold. Uh, what's He's chewy. Temp in My here. arms fell off. Right. Oh. 70 degrees. <laughs> Is that 21? He's, he's pulling a Rennie trying to sleep in. Oh. Okay. Rennie oh, sleep in. I didn't want man. To, I didn't want to oh. sleep in. People's arms are falling off. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on around here? Rennie, you're allowed to sleep in on your birthday. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Yeah, you ah, should leave in the dump rep. Chief. Oh, oh, man. Man. wasn't upset at all. No. She seemed real livid in her own <laughs> Lynette way. Right, right. I'm Disappointed. Sure. Disappointed. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. Yep. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing I'm like waking up uh, uh, like a ball of anxiety, looking at your clock, realizing you're late on your birthday or on any day, really. But, the, but especially, that's way better than being woken up. It's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or no, punched right. out of your rack. Yeah. 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 Bounced out. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you uh, did you um, were you out partying last night, right? Uh, no, actually, we were joking because Allison had decorated the mess, and there was a moment when <laughs> I was Ed, leaving. We, we had, me and Ed were talking, and then Ed left, and I was like, you know, it's just gonna be me sitting here, surrounded by all this stuff. <laughs> I was gonna look like gonna he decorated in. it. Like, oh, thanks. Good. Oh, your first one here. Have a seat. I think there'll be others soon. <laughs> it's like in my hand right now. Throwing his own you, birthday catch party. Catch holding the ribbon, going around yeah. close. Yeah, oh, what's this? <laughs> I'm just checking it out. <laughs> uh. Hey, somebody, are you guys selling that controller? What controller? What are you talking about? Look at huh? this, Josh. Look here. This is on the Victoria subreddit. Is that yours? No. No. That's enough of that. <laughs> Why? Uh, I'm, I'm sure I know what that says. <laughs> you know, the word that gave it away was subreddit. Yeah. <coughs> I, don't, I don't understand the problem. I uh, unfortunately had to walk away from that platform. Yeah, I've never actually been on Reddit. Yeah. Mm. But I don't think I recommend it. I don't know. James is on it a lot. Yeah. Now is James in the room? <laughs> is this James? James That's is on the uh, yeah. next ROV leg. James will be here soon with you, buddy. Yeah. James is coming, and I'm missing him. Cool. Yeah. yeah. You're missing James. Oh, I'm gonna. Man. I'm my. I think the whole like intro shtick will be. I'm just gonna pretend he's you, and he'll be like, "Why is he pretend? Why? Why does he think he knows me? You know?" Yeah. <laughs> Or you guys could know everything about each other. Right. And I would. <laughs> and then you get all offended because he, right. he comes back and he tells you about me. No, no. Rennie tells you stuff about James and Josh. Yeah, that you I have no know. idea. You've been working with him for years. That would be, yeah, That'd that would be, be the good. worst. <coughs> yeah. I can't stand it what? when people tell me stuff about You know, about he James was before. raised in the circus. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? All these years? <laughs> I was talking to James' mom to the other day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that's not. No. It's too far. It's too far. You're Yeah. Um. Yeah, James is coming on next leg for a month. Be yeah. Good for him to experience this. You know, uh, he'll bask in the luxury of uh, stateroom 75. Be Dave's roommate. Not you, Dave. Go back to heard was Oh, he's staying yeah, with yeah. Dave. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> Stateroom 75. Sounds like a, I don't know, maybe a murder mystery or a... Hmm. Or... Why do you call them staterooms? Because they're definitely not. <laughs> uh, 
there. Can, can you? What are you doing? I'm, I'm rolling the bottom of it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a visual. <laughs> You cannot see that. <laughs> Need to calm down, fella. <laughs> You'll be ashore in a couple of days. <laughs> uh, so no Lauren? questions, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went just, I'm sitting back here, I'm looking at AJ and I'm going like, I can't, I can't fix this situation. <laughs> <laughs> so hello out there, everyone. <laughs> they, need, they need more than a <laughs> science communicator. They need uh, science we need therapy. A <laughs> disciplinary. Yeah. We need a therapist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. can act as your therapist. The yeah. Proper psychologist. I'm, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I I will give a shout out to everyone who is. Um, Unfortunately, listening to <laughs> the it's, 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 it's just a bunch of psychologists studying us. Hi. United States, Canada, United oh. Kingdom, Germany, Australia, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Indonesia, Ecuador, D Denmark, China, Bolivia, and Barbados. Hi, thanks for joining us. We are uh, coming up from releasing a mooring uh, at the Ocean Networks Canada instrumentation area in uh, Cascadia Basin. Bam. It's one of the five nodes on our network. I'm, I'm going serious. Yeah, this yep. is, I'm going good. all in. You're doing yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 do it. <laughs> yeah. We need a bit of it. And uh, yeah, we do. <laughs> um, and yeah, this has uh, been an exciting experiment, um, a collaboration with some particle physicists, <sighs> astrophysicists at the University of Munich in Germany. And um, we are recovering one of the STRAW experiments. So STRAW is an acronym for Strings for Absorption Length in Water. And it is uh, an experiment to look for neutrinos, a neutrino telescope in the ocean. Um, so capturing these really fast particles. Um, and there are 10 modules on um, a length of mooring line. So by mooring, what we mean is that it's anchored to the sea floor and then floats within the water column and at different distinct lengths along this mooring line, um, there are modules with, um, with various things in them. So AJ, tell us, tell us one of the modules that you can... In straw A, there's two main types. One's a POCAM, which is an optical calibration module and that emits a light source. So it's just like a flashing bulb that's very calibrated to be a particular... Um, wavelength? Yeah, wavelength, or to cover uh, a wide spectrum, I guess, to be very like full, complete light, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then there's, uh, the other ones are called SDOMs, which are, I think I remember, I mean, their DOMs is digi digital optical module. S might be, or no. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, SDOMs, maybe sub C. Not sure what the S stands for. And uh, those are pretty much the receivers. So those are kind of made of, probably made of photomultiplier tubes that um, are able to sort of receive the optical signal and determine what frequencies are present and what frequencies aren't because the water in between the two will attenuate the wavelength of certain colors. And uh, and so then they they sort of they sort of know how well lights of certain colors propagate through the ocean. I think that's yeah. maybe the best answer I can give as a non. That was pretty good. <laughs> that was good. And we also have um, in straw B, which was were, recovered yesterday. Which was covered yesterday. There were two specialized modules with lidars in them, so light detection and ranging, right? And then I think the plan is to do another, we, we're, we're recovering one more? Yeah, so straw B is a single mooring, but straw, straw, or what we now sort of call straw A, uh, to differentiate it from straw B, is, uh, has two moorings that were placed in a specific distance and direction from each other, such that they're sort of facing. Okay. Um, and we're releasing those from the seafloor one at a time. 
And uh, the reason we're doing that is because after we release them from the seafloor, they come to the surface. But of course, before we can bring them on deck, we need to recover Hercules and Atalanta. And all the while, the mooring is kind of drifting um, out by the ship. And we can't really move the ship to go get the mooring. We sort of just have to let it bob and float. And if we did two at the same time, especially if they were released from very close where they are on the seafloor, there's a good chance that they would run into each other and tangle, and that would make getting them on deck very, very difficult. Um, or, you know, and worse, if fog rolls in, because it, it takes us so long to get them on deck, that we could potentially lose sight of one, which would also yeah. be very bad. Uh, although, as we're sort of learning, the uh, angle of the USBL system, the, the beacon tracking system on the ship, is actually pretty good. So, even though um, these moorings are at the surface, we wouldn't really expect our USBL to track things on the surface. Uh, because the moorings are tall enough, we're actually able to still range to them, even though they're hundreds of meters away, which is comforting to know. And I think uh, if the we fog were to roll in, the USBLs were clipped on by the ROV. Yeah, they that's were right. We're clipping them, the yeah, USBL so further down, right? Yeah. So the so ship, the yeah. ship has like a, a USBL system that allows us to determine the the uh, location and depth of these beacons. And so, if you watch us dive a lot, you'll see that we're always clipping these red beacons onto things subsea, especially if we're going to send them to the surface. So at the start of this dive, uh, we went and we clipped on a red beacon to this mooring so that when we release it to the surface, we can track it the whole way, make sure it's not getting caught up in Atlanta's uh, wire, the 6-8, make sure that it's not going to come up under the ship and potentially uh, impact the hull. So the beacons really help keep everything safe. Right on. Um, and then what's our plan? Do we have to, do we have any moorings to deploy? We do not have any moorings to deploy. So these were Pathfinder projects that have sort of run their course. They were designed to only be in the water for a certain period of time and, and we're uh, nearing the end of that time. And so we're recovering them before, you know, their structural integrity were to break down, which would make them dangerous to recover. Um, also, it, having them back will allow for some learning about the biological material that's down there that's been accumulating on these glass spheres. Um, so there's, I know, a lot of um, people looking forward to, to learning about that. Um, the future of the project is going to be called P1, the Pacific Ocean Neutrino Experiment. And the first mooring for that project is uh, scheduled to go in in the coming years. So we don't have those moorings on us to deploy in this expedition. Right. Um, but there being the, the, the modules and the release mechanism and all that is sort of an active development and uh, is really, really exciting the way that it's coming along. Right on. And information about P1 can be found at pacific-neutrino.org. I want to say org, yeah. Yep, it's dot org. There's also a, a great article that kind of summarizes things on the Ocean Networks Canada website, so oceannetworks.ca. Um, and just uh, put in our search straw, capital S-T-R-A-W. Be able to find the, the article there as well. Um, yeah, in other news, we are expecting a solar storm tonight. No way. Yeah, way. So hopefully these clouds clear up. Maybe we can see the northern lights. Yeah, I also heard that uh, right now you can see a sunspot with the naked eye. Oh. Um, I don't recommend it. Don't go look, at, look at the sun. <laughs> but if you have <laughs> some special su special kind of glasses that allow you to filter out most of the sunlight, go for it. I or at the very beginning of sunrise or sunset. I saw a picture once of a guy staring right into an eclipse. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. was it. That's a good one, Ed. What uh, year was the eclipse? 1760? Uh, no, no, this is... Uh, it was the recent one. Yeah. I think it was sometime after 2016. Got him. Got him. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, I was recently or earlier this year, I should say, I was in Hawaii and I went to the top of the volcano on Maui and they have a telescope that looks directly at the sun. And they had a whole exhibit set up there with telescopes looking at the sun safely 
in order to see these sort of sunspots and stuff. And it was, was that the really Canada cool. France Observatory? I don't believe it had Canada in the name. Mm. Those are two different countries, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know, but there's like a joint Canada France Observatory yeah. in Hawaii somewhere. Uh, He's pulling your chain. Yeah. <laughs> oh it boy. looks like it was. It's the Inuyi. I don't know how to pronounce that. I n o u y e. Inuyi. 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 I think it's named after uh, I n h o u e. I n o u y e. Inuyi. I think anyway has an H in it, but I could be wrong. I mean, not according to this telescope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it might not be named. The after acronym it. is DKIST for Daniel K. In your solar telescope. Yeah, yeah. Daniel Inouye. Oh, yeah. It doesn't have an H in it. He was a uh, uh, amazing individual. Yeah, he was a U.S. senator, but he uh, was of uh, Japanese descent, and after. Uh, Pearl Harbor, I believe, his family was interned, mm -hmm. and he volunteered for military service while he was interned to go fight for America, and was severely wounded, uh, uh, and performed heroic actions in combat, and went on to become a senator. The airport in Honolulu uh, is named after Senator Inouye. Hmm? Sounds like an interesting character. Yeah, yeah. Well, and he, now he has a sweet solar telescope named after him. So That's great. Good work. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. Not sure what we'll, uh, if we'll be able to see the Aurora Borealis tonight, but definitely. Well, I know I'll be up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Peace. Out. I'll be awake. Fair. That is totally fair. It is a, I have seen the Aurora Borealis before. It's quite a special, spectacular sighting. I've never seen it. So oh, wow. I should definitely come out tonight. Is it supposed to be clear? I don't know. We haven't seen it either? I've seen it. It's huh. I think the the thing that's most striking about it is that you, because you see it in pictures mo most often, but in real life, it's, it's it, moving. The way that it moves, it moves is yeah. like, it's sometimes it's faster than it is slower, and you're kind of like it's kind of mesmerizing to watch. It doesn't seem to be bound by any it anything. It looks like it's not only going to be clear tonight, but dead calm in the Pacific. Nice. You checking windy? Windy. Windy.com. In the Dang. entire Pacific Ocean? Well, where we are in the Pacific, <laughs> we'll put Thanks. it that way. Right. <laughs> Thanks for that one. <laughs> just, just, just being a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At this point. Yeah. You're just. No, I'll just go back to mute. I just yeah. want you to know that someone wrote in that my resume should now include that I'm experienced as a circus ringleader detecting, directing, sorry, the clowns yes. and animals. Yes. So Pilot wrangler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's the same thing, Rennie. Yeah. Yeah. Ringleader, circus ringleader, and ROV pilot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> same <side>. thing. The circus <laughs> tent. <laughs> you could put on the door. <laughs> yeah. Right. How many more minutes? <laughs> Arvel. Uh, 26. <laughs> 26, yep. as AJ called. About five more minutes till we start doing stuff for recovery. All right on. Very cool. Check the currents. Beep I was boop. lucky enough, when, uh, we used to live up in Alaska for, I think, five years, <laughs> four or five years. And so we saw northern lights up there frequently. Yeah. But sometimes they would just, uh, I came, I remember fl distinctly flying in once and they were so bright and so extensive. I got home at like two in the morning, actually woke my wife up like, you really should go look. I mean, we'd seen them a lot, but yeah. they were pretty spectacular. I was up in Utkagvik, that was, that was where I saw them, formerly known as Barrow. The uh, former mayor of Barrow, uh, Jesley Kaliak, on his uh, voicemail, at the end of his voicemail it, it, in Inupiaq, had said uh, it, he had the Inupiaq word that's like kind of thanks, like gratefulness, uh, mm -hmm. koinakpak, mm -hmm. was on his voicemail. I just thought that was cool. Yeah. You know, it's all in English, and then he's got koinakpak at the end. 
A few days ago, you were asking about where C and F meet, and I said it was minus 40, and I only know that because that's what it was when I was there. Oh, right. <laughs> it's yeah. cold. Yeah, you, you have, when you go outside and it's that cold, you your body, like, immediately has a sense of purpose, like, this is I can't urgency. be out in this yeah, environment you long. You have to get out. You're like, I gotta get I, away. I got it, yeah. Start the timer. Yep. Did you say you, C and If F? you drop your car yeah. keys in the Celsius snow, Fahrenheit, you just six buy another away. car. <sighs> this, that's what he unmuted for, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> he leaned over, he unmuted <laughs> no. for that. He and borrowed he your calculator to figure out what the number was. <laughs> yeah. Or what the letters were? <laughs> he didn't even count. He's just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, how the tables turn! <laughs> yeah, I came in here. I came in here like you know, late. Every everyone's making fun of me, and I'm doing my best to try to turn it back around. All good. So it's minus what? Minus 41 for CNF? 40? Is 40. it? Or about, I don't know. That's right roundabouts. What about Kelvin? Kelvin? I don't I don't remember. Well, it's what, 275? So it Kelvin and Fahrenheit meet at what? It'd be 235-ish. I don't think, I don't, is it a one-to-one -one, though? I don't think. It's one-to-one -to, -one to Celsius. Oh, is it? One-to-one -to, -one to Celsius, that's it. I just looked it up. It says Fahrenheit and Kelvin read the same temperature at 574 degrees. <coughs> wow. Okay. Oh, that's when they read the same. Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> I just thought of a bad joke. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. I was gonna be, no, 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 it's, not, it's, not it's not funny at all. It's uh, not funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh, I can't stay in. It's got to come out. All right. So. So, how have you been explaining this experience to your colleagues back on shore, Lauren? How, sorry. <laughs> I just had to stop SPL so I could make sure that they weren't talking on it. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Ed, could you repeat the question, please? How have you been explaining this experience to your uh, colleagues and family on shore? Well, I set up a little WhatsApp group. Oh, nice. Yeah, and then uh, I, I threw a whole bunch of people on it, um, friends and colleagues. Just mixed them all together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and my mom. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Neither a friend nor a colleague. <laughs> Neither well, right, family and yeah. my brother. And um, my my mom, my dear mother, has been sending like, these like cutesy Emoji messages things. to me oh, yeah. and stuff. But I don't know if Not, she realizes no, that it's going group. to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm getting teased about the oh, some of the things right. that they're saying. And I was yeah, like, hmm, that's a lesson. That's a There's lesson. There's a lesson in there. Yeah. <laughs> Now, if I remember correctly, your brother is a maritime engineer. He's a marine mechanic. Marine yeah. mechanic. So yeah. you got an engine room tour yesterday. We got the engine room tour. My nice. brother was finally happy with me. Nice. And uh, shared shared some really cool photos. And uh, yeah, he's he's done some pretty neat um, expeditions and sailings himself. So he's Great. done all over Haida Gwaii. Um, oh, that's really cool. And then down to the Solomon Islands and things. Yeah. So he's wow. experienced all sorts of sea states and yeah. you know months on the boat and stuff. So I, I kind of uh, feel a little bit closer to nice. him now. Yeah, I've that's experienced awesome. some of the same stuff. Yeah. I'm sure he was also wrangling his own circus yeah. <laughs> yeah. in a way. Similar experiences. Yeah, I don't think so. No? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Right. So, uh, yeah, so I think, um, yeah, that's been kind of fun. Lots of pictures. Everyone's I'm sad I missed the engine room tour yesterday. I had to take a nap before the morning came I up. Can, I can show you the photos. You got photos? I got tons of photos. All right. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, the engineer, it, I was surprised. A lot of it is, he said, this is their quiet time. 
So, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they can like get all sorts of stuff done now. Yeah, he said... Um, they can't dig into yeah, the engine, per down. se, yeah, put but them back on. do lots of little stuff. Yeah, so... I'm going to um, stream uh, forward. How many horsepower does this puppy pack? Uh, it was very loud down there. I don't think I caught exactly. There are two generators, main generators, and there's a brand That's a new... That's great photo of you. Yeah. <laughs> And then there's a brand new, uh, well, fairly new. <laughs> That's a great photo of Doug. <laughs> dynamic positioning equipment. Um, we saw the electronics area. We we like the the interface with um, all of the electronics bits. In the and engine control room. The engine control room. That would be that. Oh, yep. uh, do we want to put? Is the magnum and across onto um, the cutter yet? Actually, a lot of their work. Shall we Not put a the lot of them over onto the cutter, make sure it doesn't take off? I didn't really off? think about the... Um, I would recommend it. The osmosis <laughs> system, so yeah. the, the water system. Yeah. They they, they kind of manage that. So they, they test the water every certain amount, Pregnant, yeah. amount of time. And they um, yeah have to make sure that the, the whole osmosis, no, reverse too. osmosis system works. Because we do generate our own water. And I think it was 25 liters per hour that we uh -oh. we create and i mean we've got like we have fresh water tanks too we have fresh water tanks but we have lots of people on board between 40 and 50 people on board so that's a lot of showers a lot of laundry a lot of you know water usage sure Are we using the osmosis water for that uh, sorry do we use the osmosis? no i don't no, think so i don't think we do yeah but we use um I think the osmosis water specifically goes to that tap in the mess. That's right. And then some other places water. as well, yeah. yeah. The galley. Yeah. So the other water that we use that isn't osmosis water, that's just a tank that we filled up in Victoria? Uh, or yes. Honolulu. Honolulu. Yeah. 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 Every time we're at shore? Yep. And then I think uh, I think Here's it's treated, the someone said it, they treat it with iodine and, and such. So it is safe to drink. Yeah. But I know a lot of people prefer not to drink it. Let's go ahead, Bridge. It's brown. It doesn't look brown to me. <laughs> doesn't look brown. Okay. I, I, live, I live on well water. As fast <laughs> as I can. There's a whole new experience to uh, what brown water looks like. My water looks like tea. Um, but thanks to my lovely husband that is changing. We're getting a filtration system. Nice. Big news to share over... SPL. And uh, well, while you're sharing family news, is he headed up north now? Is he, he on his way? He is currently um, still in um, Stevenson area of Washington. So along the Columbia River, he's yeah. uh, paddling. There's a big uh, race today, a downwind, uh, bubble. downwind race. Yeah. For Sailing? Nope, for surf skis, OC1s, and SUPs. Oh, nice. So a paddling mm. race. I want an OC1 so That's bad. That's on it. You can get one. They're so expensive. Yes, they are. But you can join a club. And then I there are lots I, of clubs. I just paddle on the gorge. Huh? Yeah, you want to paddle out in the ocean, open I ocean. Know. Where's the club on the ocean? By me. That's convenient. Yeah. Well, Is there's a number of clubs, and you just paddle out. <laughs> That's the wonderful thing about waterways. Mm -hmm. You can go to the area. people paddling OC ones like in the gorge, yeah. like not on the ocean. I think it's yeah. okay. Like. Yeah. But that's the pathway to the fun stuff. I guess, yeah. The waves, the waves. Those, those boats are meant for <coughs> surfing. Yeah. So, yeah, so he's he's going to be coming home on Saturday. <coughs> it's a long trip, so it's going to take them two days to get back. And apparently, my child is running free with other children at the campsite, living her best <coughs> life. Nice. I spoke to her for, like, two minutes yesterday. She's yeah. like, hi, Mom. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, just wants to go. Wants to go play, yep. Hang out. Yeah. So it'll be uh, it'll be nice to see them after three weeks. ROV through 300 meters. 300, I. And um, to go back to SPL land and the questions that are coming in, um, the plan is we are recovering these straw moorings. So these are really cool. Um, they've been an experiment in partnership, well, for researchers at the University of Munich looking for uh, neutrinos. And um, they are a, a mooring, which means it's um, anchored what? at the bottom, 
float at the top and then these modules along the length. Um, straw B was 500 meters long and we're recovering straw B today. No, straw B was yesterday. This straw B is yeah. part of straw. This we're is recovering so this straw is straw blue slash two. Okay. Yeah. It's not straw B, it's straw blue. Straw, straw blue. blue. <laughs> How could you ever mix that up? <laughs> He's offended. It's 150 meters. I didn't know which 150 one it was. Meters. Okay. Loud and clear back deck. And uh, yeah, yeah, and so this is actually a fairly involved um, deck operations. Did he not? He didn't deck come. deck procedures, right? We gotta carefully. We gotta a use a, the crane as well as the winch to pull in the line, and then as the modules come up. Um, carefully pull them up. The, the modules are these glass spheres. Um, they're anchored to the mooring line, um, which is a line as well as um, electrical um, connection as well. And so that's, it's relatively delicate, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. And so they've got to be craned out and Just then um, detached from the line. Um, so it takes. It'll take us a few hours. It takes a few hours. 150 meters, so it's a lot less than yesterday. Yesterday we hauled in 500 meters. Okay. So a lot less time on the winch, but still every package has to be brought aboard carefully, and we have to find room on deck for the buoy, the top float. And yeah, so a lot, a lot of commonalities between them, but it should go a little bit quicker. And then we'll be back in the water this afternoon. Yep. Recovering the second one. Yeah. And swapping a hydrophone array. Right on. And the uh, cool thing about a hydrophone array um, is we use m more than one hydrophone. So this array in particular has four hydrophones. And uh, having a number of instruments together um, gives us a sense of directionality of where the sound is coming from. So that's really helpful for us to, um, yeah, to not only just hear what's, what uh, is in the ocean, but to be able to get a sense of you know, if it's coming or going and which direction it's coming in. So um, if you go to our YouTube channel, Ocean Network's YouTube channel, uh, lots of really cool recordings of underwater sounds. Um, fun fact, there are over 1,000 species of fish that make sounds. So it's kind of neat. a lot of fish. Just wait till later when we recover our fish acoustics experiment. Fish acoustics experiment will also be recovered in this expedition, Nautilus NA-151. That was a really fun experiment. It just occurred to me after 12 years of working with it what it does. What's that? Oh, Josh, the fish acoustics these experiment. These are things that you don't need to admit. Well, the fish acoustics <laughs> we just deployed Lies. with you on the telly last <laughs> May, I think was when that one went in the water. Do you remember it had like the upside down bait bottles? Oh yeah. Yeah, that was a sweet experiment. Sure. Um, I expect there to be a light current from behind, but we're tracking at point three Roger. forward, so it should be pretty neutral. How, uh, of curiosity, how do you, do ADCP? Yeah, we have an ADCP now. And it, and it takes it into account the point three? Yeah, it's calibrated for, cool. um, yeah. So, pinging it now. And when and is it showing point, point one? Point one point going two. that, this going is crazy. that way. Yeah, so 130. A, uh, Temperature at the last site. Final solution of about point one going forward? It's like half the, right. half the sure. temperature. Lovely. I can, that was good math. <coughs> it's you just are happy to kill the sonars, Rem? Yeah, I know. Sure, can do. Thanks, mate. Stop. Hello. We'll wait to see it get to the very top. Maybe this didn't start properly. Yeah, that would have been just during descent. It looks like it's the top part. Yeah. Like 18 degrees, that's like, that's air temp. Yeah. The water's never that warm. Huh. So that must have just been recording in air. Huh. So for folks uh, listening, you can take a look at all of, there was some question on who is currently on this expedition. Uh, check out <coughs> NA-151. Uh, this is the expedition with Ocean Networks Canada. The full crew, um, the OET and science crew are on there. And uh, you can take a look at, you can read all about us, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, we will be diving again later today. So um, make sure you've got your notifications turned on your socials and uh, we'll issue a dive alert. But it won't be... 
for a number of hours. Um, interesting thing with recovering these moorings is uh, we have to place a beacon on, on the mooring so that we can track it as it ascends. Lots of wires in the water or complicates things. So we want to do it really safely. So we bring the ROVs down, clip a beacon on the mooring, um, release the mooring. We know where it's bobbing around on the sea surface. This one this morning came up like a rocket. <laughs> it was so yeah. fast. It was up in minutes and uh, yeah. coming up from 2,600 meters. So it was uh, shot relatively, shot right up. And yeah. um, got to bring up the ROVs and then go and retrieve the mooring so we don't have any wires crisscrossing. And um, then we'll be diving again. How long did I say today? it took? Do you remember? It was like less than well, half an hour. When you came downstairs, you're like, it's five minutes at least. But I don't know how long you'd been sitting in the van after it had, had been released. I was just Oh, yeah, yeah, I'd been in there for a while. But I think it was still it was like 25 minutes. 25 minutes. So you can calculate that speed, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> So, yeah, definitely uh, check out the website the, um, for this expedition, NA-151. we got a few more days out here. We'll be back in port in Canada on Tuesday, July 18th. So quite a number of objectives yet to do, I think, right? But we're nearing the end of it all. Yeah, we're making our way through them, for sure. It's been pretty neat to see all of the collaborators around the world um, who we may be collecting samples for or um, helping um, do surveys or um, like with, with this experiment, the straw experiment, uh, all of the collaborators, we're, we've got this great Google chat group and getting uh, lots of excitement from, from people all over the world. Speaking of all over the world, shout out to everyone. Austria, Barbados, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Puerto Rico, Sweden, Australia, Germany, United Kingdom, Italy, Canada, and United States. Thanks for joining us online. Ready for the launch and recovery salvo? I am ready, Dave. Roger. Let's lock it up. Locked up. So as we recover the vehicles, I'm going to uh, stop talking for a while. But uh, check out the full expedition information, and we'll be diving later today. Thanks. Who's rocking the green pants? Just jealous. Gosh, if I buy you green pants, will you wear them? Only if they're that tight. Yep. <laughs> I think that could be AJ, really what would motivate you to buy pants for Josh? I just don't believe he'd wear them. Yeah, that was me. I just, my leg slipped me. Well, we're not going it, yeah. Yeah, uh, that was me leg. No. Roger. Jet, jet's cooled. Jet's cooled. Jet's cold. Um, <laughs> well, it does seem like colored pants are either really, really loose or really tight because those seem kind of tight, but and which is fine. And then Jeb has the colored green pants, and they're like the opposite. So Jeb's right there. Jeb is here. You're here, Jeb. Good morning, Jeb. Jeb has a pair of red 
pants red or pants. are they red pants, pants? Green pants. Pants and green yeah. pants, right? Purple? Have I ever seen you in purple pants? I've never seen him in purple pants. I have a purple hat, but I don't. Is have that fedora? Pants. Oh, the, the bucket hat? <laughs> I don't have a purple hat. Uh, red pants, yellow pants, green pants. You looking, have yellow pants? Looking oh, yeah, to get like a pair a of blue. You know, they're like a mustard. Jeans? Yellow. Yeah, they are mustard. I can recommend jeans. <laughs> okay, they're usually blue. Stop, oh, stop, Roger. Work pants. Deck control. Go ahead, control. All stop, seven five meters. Stop, seven five meters. Break, break, bridge. Back deck, bridge. Just gonna go ahead and continue with retrieval. Charlie to recover. Which one's Charlie? I don't know, but he's gonna do the recovery this this afternoon morning. Yeah. Looks like we're centered up for a field goal. Roger, I like the little trail line for me to stay on. Oh That's yeah. The goal. One of my favorite things to do is fly by the nav screen. I don't know why. I really do love it's it. It's kind of a fun little video game. Yeah. It's more fun when the navigator draws a little stick man on top of the vehicle, which is what I'm used to, but that's okay. No comment? You're going to tell me just way at the end of the cruise? <laughs> <laughs> Your preferences? I you mean I could have been drawing stick figures this whole time? <laughs> well, you could draw better than stick. I just, I don't know what your artistic capabilities are. Uh, not, not very good. Dialed. Best game ever. It looks like we're on a lake. Yeah. It's like super light wind waves kind of just chopping around. That's it. I can't resist. Does it remind you of your bros? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you have fully corrupted her. Nice. <laughs> this wow. is a really important part of the... We need to keep contemplating. Yeah, come on, Chad. <laughs> come on, Chad. You get made fun of once. Yeah. Um, um, just going to have to pull rank here. Pull rank. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not out of water. Uh, that was a random thing to just say on this. But what are they coming up at? Slow. 16, normal speed. Okay. 30 meters to go. I know, I'm going to be all messed up when we have a 30 meter tether and we stop at 50. Yeah. Be, everything's going to seem fast. What and are you like stopping we're too here close for? to the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we did one time, we switched over to a shorter one for a, uh, I the think it was caves? a wreck dive or something. Yeah, something. And it was like, yeah, it was, it was in the shallows in uh, Santa Barbara Island or something like that. Yeah. And yeah, it was kind of like, I think that's where we just put Annalana over the side and just deepen up to keep it cool. Yeah.
dive updates will be on socials. So you can check out nautiluslive.org. Or sorry, that's the website. But um, there will also Band be a message deck, there. eyes on Hercules, line up, updates. center line. Copy. Hey, you can see the jet pump. You're right, you can. The jet pump. Yeah. There I am. <clears throat> Just gonna keep going as is. Roger. Stick ahead. Roger. Still got that current ready. Uh, how are you? How's it feel? Oh, uh, well, I don't know. I'm Point two of a knot's pretty hard to tell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So point three, point two. Roger. Roughly from the port corner. Roger. That way. I have no thrust on, and it's just kind of barely tight. Yeah. So, probably pretty good. That AC ADCP can tell right at the surface, hey? At the surface. It's, well, um, wow, so, it, I mean, it. yeah, it's, it's low, and then it, actually the jet pump noise kind of washes out. Well, as well, not not today, but when we're when it's really running, it washes out a few meters. So it's kind of like we're looking at, I think like down to ten or so meters, and kind of in that window there. But it's it's usually like pretty pretty good enough, unless you're in crazy countercurrent areas. Yeah, yeah, open ocean's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, down in uh, Channel Islands, like around sunset, the currents go nuts. Winds kick up. Van, deck. Go for Van. Yeah, we're still here in the uh, center dine. 
beacon chirping away. I'm not sure if you guys want to secure that or not. Roger. Oh, I can hear the sonar die. It must be quiet back there. Yeah. Hearing a, like, 20 kilohertz <laughs> chirp. They are pretty loud. Uh, yeah, I, sec I can stop them here, because they're electrically triggered, so, either way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if they were talking about Atalanta's chirp. Probably. That makes more sense than Hercules' chirp. Yes, it does. I noticed with Josh on the Daisy, nobody's making any comments. Let's see how that is. You know, it's nothing. It's nothing too impressive. It's nothing the other way. It's just like it's a it's a workhorse. You know, he's just out there doing the Daisy chain, how it should be done. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Van Deck, can you have Hercules pull forward a little, please? Roger. Roger. Come on, baby. There it is. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's like... It actually was a lot less with the prior deck. Yep. Well, uh, it's different everywhere, but on ours, it's open comms, and you're just like, you're good, you're good, okay, a little bit, that, 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 I know we can see in cameras, but it's very constant, yeah. It is tough when you have radios, a little bit different, and that's how you guys are obviously doing it, which is fine. Uh, yeah, I don't, if you have them, I don't see any reason why not to use them, or just mic anyways. They're hard over the hard hats. You gotta get yeah. get them fitted. But uh, they make ones that are behind the ear that go around the back of the head. Nice. Here you yeah. Go. Cutting machine's doing just fine. Yeah. So what is that hooked up to? Looks like a about spare 10 line. Yeah, uh, Hercules is 10 meters from the trans. 10 meters high. That's right, spare hydraulic valve. Spare hydraulic valve. How many of those do you have? Uh, one? Five, four, oh. four or five. Yeah, most vehicles have at least, you know, three to f two to four. Yeah. Or like stuff like the porch and the bio box and the toolbox I'll use one each yeah. or two each depending on how they work so if you add more of that stuff as standard on your vehicle you use up your valve pack you know you get more valve packs mm -hmm. uh, there is a reason no um, the way that the the way that the valves work and uh, I'll have to I mean Dan will explain it much better than I can Trevor as well. I'm a, I'm an ET buddy. I don't, I don't, I don't deal with hydrastics. Van Deck, Hercules is past the transom. Copy. Not according to wire cam, it's not. Oh. 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 the calm seas is basically best to just let him pull us and just orient the head because if you try and help him you just slack in the line and then, and then yeah there was talks like so we used to have less aft of the ship so the crane was on the port corner 
And then when we, we were learning, worried about side-loading the crane, which was why we were trying to, like, but honestly, there hasn't been too much side-loading, and they seem to, like, angle it. We, you know, it, it, it works out. I, I kind of still wish the crane was in the aft, but... Where's the laterals going? Whatever. Okay. And uh, Hercules is clear of the water. Yeah. Can we switch this? Yep. Off. High voltage secure. Oh, it's the joysticks just sitting funny. Okay. Uh, Trevor, I'm sure, is talking to himself up in the crane about it. Uh, is my there was the the joystick had like.